Yo, it's your boy Six, and welcome back to another No Setup Card Trick tutorial. Today we find out who the lucky winners are of two decks of cards and some stickers from my MLT Magic Tricks collaboration in my previous video. And to be honest, I'm feeling a little generous and my lucky number is obviously six. So instead of picking five winners, we ended up picking six winners. So without any further ado, here are the five winners. Congratulations to our lucky winners. If you are one of the lucky winners, be sure to check down below to find out how you can claim your prize. Uh, send me your mailing address. You can either contact me on Instagram or you can go ahead and just uh, fill out the form that I have down below. There is a verification process. I should let you know. We have to prove that it is your account that actually won. So I'm gonna ask you to do some things to prove your, your account and then I'll send out your playing cards. Congratulations. As for the rest of you, I'm sorry, but there are plenty more contests coming up in the future. Uh, probably in a couple weeks, I'll be doing another big giveaway just because of all the support that you guys have shown me thus far. Now let's go ahead and get into today's effect. This effect is from Carl Falls and is known as 37.3. It is a no setup card trick, completely self-working, really simple, but really, really clever. I'm showing you two ways in which you can do this effect. So let's go ahead and get right into the performance. All right, so let's take a look at the performance of Carl Fulves' 37.3. This is a fantastic effect. I think you're really gonna enjoy it. And as promised, it is with a shuffled deck of cards, can be borrowed from the spectator. There is no setup and it's completely self-working. There are a few things you have to remember, but they're pretty simple. So I'm gonna shuffle the cards like this, just so you can see, and here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna remove some cards from the pack here. Let's go with, uh, yeah, that works for me. Uh, I'll take that one and I really want to try to get inside of the spectator's mind uh, See if I can control them. Uh, let's see. This could work. This could work. How many I got here? Yeah, maybe two more. That'd be perfect. I think I think that's gonna do it for me So I'm gonna use these cards in a second to try to get inside of your mind But first uh, I'm actually gonna take these cards out of sight for a second because I'm gonna make a prediction I'm not going to show you what the prediction is. I made my prediction and I'm going to place it inside of the card box just like this. And I'll keep that here in full view. And the spectator can even place their hands on top of these cards. Uh, like I said, I want to try to get into the spectator's mind here. So, hmm, yeah, I think, I think this is going to work. Yeah, let's try it. Here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hand you the cards in a second, and what you're gonna do is this. Uh, you're gonna flip some cards over. Now, I'm gonna show you now, you're not gonna flip over five cards. In fact, you're not even gonna flip over four cards. You're not even gonna flip over three cards. You're actually gonna flip over two cards. Now, you can cut the cards anywhere you like. It doesn't matter. Cut it as many times as you like, and then you get to flip over two cards. In fact, you can cut again, flip over two cards. Even more than that, you can take the packet, flip it over, cut the packet, turn over two cards, cut the packet, turn over two cards. It's really up to you. So now I hand the cards to the spectator and they're in full control. They start cutting the cards. They start flipping cards over. Uh, they can turn the packet over anytime they like. They cut, turn two over, and anytime they want, they get to stop. Now they've been in control this whole time. They finally stop and I tell them to deal two piles. One card here, one card here, going back and forth, just like this. Now they have a choice. They can flip this packet on top of this one or this packet on top of this one. So let's just say they flip this packet over here. And now uh, I didn't do anything to the cards. They've been holding the cards the whole time. Now I'm gonna tell them that actually two cards are now reversed in the pack. All the other cards will face one way except for two cards. And in this case, it's the eight of clubs and the five of diamonds. Now I told you I made a prediction at the beginning of this trick and I really did. And I placed it inside of this deck of cards and I flipped two cards over myself and it's the matching cards, the matching black eight and the matching red five, a perfect match to the cards that you randomly cut and turned over to at any spot. And there you have it. This is a brilliant effect from Carl Falls, 37.3. Uh, really, really clever. I'm gonna show you a couple of versions uh, of this effect. Let's get into the explanation. All right, folks, let's take a look at this. Now, the original version took a little bit of setup, uh, very, very small. It's really 
not much, but I just figured the, the way I'm showing you this handling is completely self-working and also it's completely no setup. It's from a shuffle deck of cards. Uh, at the end, I will show you the, the original version and how that's handled, but because there is a really cute prediction that takes place there that I think you'll like, but let me show you the basic version because I think this is a lot more powerful. So the cards are shuffled uh, just like this and the spectator can stop shuffling and hand the cards back to you at any time. Once they hand the cards back to you, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna go through the cards like this towards your face and I'm gonna look at the bottom two cards. In this case, I have a red nine and a red two. And I wanna pull out the matching cards to these bottom two cards. Now, for instance, if you had the two red twos on the bottom, I would just give the cards a cut or tell them to shuffle one more time just to change the procedure up a little bit like this. Uh, you don't want the same cards in the bottom. But in this case, I got a eight, uh, two and a nine, so that works in my favor. So there's a two and a nine. And I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna take a few cards out of the pack. I'm gonna take out eight cards. And of those eight cards, I gotta pull out the other red two and the other red nine. So I'm gonna go through the pack like this. I'm gonna take out a few cards like this. It doesn't matter, two random cards. I could take out two random cards again. Now I look for my two and my nine. So I add my two. I find my red nine, add my red nine. And I need two more cards to give me eight. And now I have my pile of cards on the table ready to go. So there we have it. We have the two and the nine uh, inside of the pack, just like that. Now with these cards, uh, I'm gonna tell the spectator, here's what I wanna do. Before I do anything else, I'm gonna make a prediction. Now, if I was performing for somebody at a, an actual location, I'd put the cards behind my back and I would just take the top, the, the bottom two cards, flip them face up and stick them inside the middle, just like this. So those two cards go just from the bottom. I just go behind my back, right? I go behind my back, take the two bottom two cards, flip them face up and stick them inside of the middle. That's all you have to do. So those go inside the middle, uh, just like that. And then they go into the box. So I come back out, place the cards inside the box. Say I'm gonna leave those in full view the entire time. Now you have to do some stuff with these cards here, okay? So what am I gonna do with these cards? Well, I have to get the two and the nine into two positions, three and seven. Remember I told you the effect was 37, three? Well, I need to get these cards into the 37. So what I wanna do is, here's just how I do it. I tell the spectator, uh, I'm not gonna show you these cards quite yet because I'm gonna try to influence you. So now I start building it up and I say, I'm gonna place these cards in a very specific order. Uh, I'll place this one here, I'll move this one here. And all I'm really doing at this point, look what I did. I just took that nine, I placed it third, and I took the, seven, uh, the two and I placed it seventh. That's it, I put them in that position. Now, the other cards, I move some of those cards around. Uh, you know, I could say, oh, I'll put this one here and I'll bring this one here. I just move cards around to look like I'm putting it in a very specific order. But all I'm really doing is making sure that I have the third card as a nine, the seventh card as a two, or vice versa, it doesn't matter which way you go with it. Once I do that, I am now set to perform the effect. So I do this, uh, I'm just gonna set these cards up in a specific way and say, yeah, I, th I think it's set and I think I know what you're gonna do. Let's try it. Now, I explain to the spectator the procedure in order to do this effect. What does that look like? Well, exactly as I showed you is exactly what you're gonna do. As I explain to them the effect, I say, here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna turn some cards over, but you're not gonna turn over five, I turn over five cards. You're not gonna turn over four. I spread four cards over and I turn those over. Then I say, in fact, you're not even gonna turn over three. And I turn three cards over. That's all I had to do for this trick to work. That sets up the trick for me. Five, four, three. I turned over five, then turned over four, then turned over three. And in, 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 in explaining to the spectator what they're gonna do. And I say, you're actually gonna turn over two cards because that's gonna be our lucky number. I use that as a premise for the effect to make sense. I say, you're gonna cut the cards, and I do, and turn two cards over. You can cut again and turn another set of two cards over. In fact, you can cut as many times as you like and then turn two cards over. In fact, you can flip the packet over and then turn two cards over, or you can cut and then turn two cards over. You can flip and then cut and then turn two cards over. It's totally up to you. And I now hand the cards to the spectator and I allow them to do the same exact thing. So they cut the cards anywhere they want, turn two cards over, they cut again, 
turn two cards over and they really get the free choice of doing all of this, turning it up uh, and over just like that. So now once they are done, I say perfect. Once you're finished, you feel you've mixed the cards and you don't wanna go any further, I want you to deal the cards into two piles, one on this side, one on this side. So that then I have them go back and forth just like this. So now that we're in this position in which the cards have been dealt out, they get to decide whether this packet gets flipped over onto this packet or this packet gets flipped over onto this packet. It is really their choice. They decide and they do so. Now there's two ways in which this goes. I wanna give you a, a pro tip here. You do not wanna say that two cards are gonna end up face up because they may not end up face up. They may end up face down. It's because of this. If I turn this packet this way, you'll notice that the two cards are face up. However, if I turn these cards over onto this packet, you'll notice that the two cards end up face down. So they can end up face up or they can end up face down. You don't really know. However, what you wanna do is that when you tell the spectator to flip over the packet, that uh, at the end, you're gonna say two cards will be reversed. Right, so you can say that they're reversed or you can say two cards will be turned over. Up to you, doesn't matter. So let's just say they went this way and you say, look, you shuffle the cards, face ups and the face downs, you mix them as much as you like. Now every single card is facing one direction, except for two cards, our lucky number two. Spread the cards and they'll see that there's two cards face up. And you say, no way, this is strange. You could have shuffled anywhere, stopped anywhere, but you managed to stop with two cards. I told you I took a prediction earlier today. Uh, I placed it inside the deck. You can spread through and show that it's a perfect match. You have the two and the two and the nine and the nine, the perfect mates to these cards. Uh, and it's a really clever, really, really smart effect. Uh, Self-working, like I said, as long as you follow the procedures that I told you here, you'll be able to do this same exact effect uh, with no extra work. Uh, the, the principle involved here, if you're curious, it's called the uh, the Cato principle. It's the cut and turn over principle. And it's a very popular, very, very clever principle in magic. So if, some, if that's something you wanna learn more about, you're welcome to, to look that up online and you'll find tons of great stuff with it. Uh, but that is how we do the 37-3 effect. Uh, with that being said, I will now show you the original version and how that is performed and how it is explained as well. All right, so let's take a look at the original version hand or in handling of this effect. Uh, the prediction is actually shown from the beginning. Uh, so you say I took out eight cards here from the pack um, and I'm gonna see, I don't know which one you were gonna pick. I'm gonna see if I can get you to pick one of these cards. Um, and I'm telling you now that I, I'm not sure if it was the eight of hearts or the eight of diamonds, but uh, it's gonna be an eight and it's gonna be one of those either hearts or diamonds. Uh, I'm just not sure which one as of yet. So let's see if I can influence you. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna take uh, some cards, not five, uh, not even four. You're not even gonna take three. We're gonna use two as our lucky number. So that means you're gonna cut the cards, take two cards, flip them over. Cut the cards, take two cards, flip them over. You can take the cards this way, give them a cut, flip two cards over. It is really up to you, however you wanna do it. Give the spectators the cards, the spectators go ahead and they get to work. They cut the cards, flip two, they flip the packet over, cut the cards, flip two, and they stop whenever they like. Whenever they stop, you tell them to deal the packet into two piles, just like this, and they get to choose whether this pile goes on top of this one or this one goes on top of this one. So let's just say uh, that they decide to go this way, so they go ahead and place the two piles just like that. Now you tell them that I showed you my prediction and I wasn't sure if it's eight of hearts or eight of diamonds, but I'll tell you one thing now, all the cards are now facing one direction uh, except for a card that will be reversed. Let's see how we did. The, oh wait, the three of hearts and the three of diamonds. None of the eights, wow. Um, well, you know what? <laughs> I wasn't sure what you were gonna pick, so I made sure I got both of them. So the three of diamonds and the three of hearts, just like that. You can see the three, you see the three uh, uh, in the heart there, just like that. We get the perfect matches uh, to that. And this is the original effect. Like I said, um, I don't love it. I think it's cute, but I don't, I don't think it's as amazing as the first version I showed you, but I, I, would, I would be remiss if I didn't include this in here. Uh, same idea. The only difference with this one is that you did want to include the eight of hearts and the eight of diamonds in there because it makes sense for the beginning. If those cards weren't there, it wouldn't make sense. You want them to see it in the pack. You also want to have the three of hearts and the three of diamonds. Third and seventh, as we talked about before, same procedure takes place. So now by placing those third and seventh, 
uh, you do the same thing. The spectators are expecting the eight of diamonds or the eight of hearts. Uh, you go through, do the same thing. Three car uh, five cards, flip them over. Four cards, flip them over. Two, uh, three cards, flip them over. And you just tell them, go ahead, cut the packet, turn over any two cards. Go through the whole procedure exactly as you did before. They deal two piles whenever they want. Flip one on top of the other. And now when you spread the when you spread the cards out, you'll see two cards are reversed. In this case, you'll get the three of diamonds and the three of hearts. And you end with showing the prediction and say, you know what? I got them both, rip it in half. Say I got the three of diamonds and the three of hearts. It's a cute effect. I don't think it's as amazing, uh, but if you like this type of magic, I think it could work for you and I had to include it. Uh, so there you have it. That is 37.3 by Carl Falls. Remember to subscribe and tell me which version down below you like better. Do you like the, uh, the, the handling with the predictions or do you like the paper version? Maybe, maybe people like that one better. There you have it, folks. I will see you all in the next episode and congratulations to our winners.